I'm Aaron Summers and I'm going to tell you a few tips of how I bowl fast and how I was able to bowl 150 k's live here on Cricket Life Stories. So Cricket Last Show is with me, Neil Kagram. Today we're joined by Aaron Summers. Aaron, how are you doing? Yes, yeah, pretty good. So yes, yeah, so Aaron, you're one of the, literally you are one of the quickest bowlers on the planet at the moment. Um, but let's just talk through your career before we get into some of the tips um, on fast bowling. So, you know, just how did you get into cricket? What was your passion? You Did you have a cricketing background? Or I, I did a bit of research. You were into other sports before, weren't you? Yeah, um, I've always played sport and I've always played a, a mixture of sport. Um, my, my main sport was um, Australian girls football, so AFL football, um, which I started at probably, you know, five, six years old, which a lot of Australians do. Um, that's the main sport here in the winter and then cricket's the main sport in the summer. Um, I come from a, a heavy baseball, softball background. Uh, my mum and dad both played played softball um my two brothers played baseball and softball um and i did the same i, I we started out in t-ball which is obviously modified baseball and um up through the age to you know 12 um that was my main summer sport i, I played them and then um i switched over to cricket at the age of about 12 or 13 so i was pretty late start but it's worked out not too bad and then your break into the professional game, did you come through an academy system? Uh, can you talk through your kind of early youth days? Yeah, um, as I said, I started at 12 or 13. Uh, my first year or two, um, I just played, you know, local club cricket, um, just on synthetics um, with a few mates. And then I got identified into um, a Premier League club, um, which at the time was Wannery District Cricket Club. Um, and that's just, just rep, cr rep cricket. Um, and I played that in the 14s and the 15s and then in the 15s I got identified by um, one of the Western Australia Creed Association, so one of the Wacker Scouts, um, saw me playing in you know, one of the rep semi-finals um, which I bowled quite fast um, and that's when I kind of got identified as, as probably being the quickest um, in my age group you know, in Western Australia. Um, so a lot of the other players played you know, junior state stuff, and then they kind of identified that I was probably quicker um, than most of them at about 15 years of age, and that's when I got uh, thrown into the the WACA um, development system in the in the state under 17s. Um, so their pathway um, at you know 15 years of age. So let's talk about your um, big bash debut uh, for Hobart. In that same team were fellow speed merchants Joff Rach and Tamar Mills but uh you clocked the quickest over 150 clicks um talk us through it yeah so um I wasn't in the original um 16 man um squad as such for Hobart Hurricanes um I wasn't signed at all um Gary Kirsten was a was a coach at the time and probably about a week or so away from the first game um they they picked me to tour um, for the practice matches. Um, so I was net bowling and I, I was part of the group, but I wasn't officially contracted. Uh, I played a scratch match against uh, the Melbourne Stars in front of about 10,000 people in, in rural uh, Victoria. Um, and I think I took one for 15 off, off two overs. Um, and I was in there starting 11 or 12 for that game. Um, I didn't think too much of it. I didn't know that I was that close. And then, you know, three days out from round one, uh, Gary Kirsten told me at training, hey, mate, um, we're putting you on the 13 for the first game, uh, which was which is pretty cool, which means I'm officially part of the squad. Um, and I, I guess I officially have a contract. And then probably a day later after training, he said to me, hey, mate, you're in the 11, you're playing, you get ready. So um, I'd never played any games of professional cricket before. Um, I, I'd only been in Tasmania for probably four or five months. Um, and, you know, not many people knew who I was. There's a few people that knew I, I just bowled quick. Um, had never had a speed gun on me in, a, in an official game. 
um, just in the nets, you know, a couple of times. So uh, it was pretty exciting. Um, as you said, me, Ty Mill and Joffre all made our debuts in the same game. Um, Joffre was, was an unknown as well. Not many people knew who Joffre was except for people in England. Um, and then Ty Mill had already played for, you know, RCB and he's already played for England. So, um, you know, everyone knew who, who Ty Mill was um, around the world. But in Australia, he still was pretty much an unknown. So, um, at the start of the game, Gary pretty much asked all three of us, you know, who's, who's going to bowl the quickest? Um, I straight away said Ty Mill because uh, obviously I didn't know too much about Jofra. Um, Ty Mill said Jofra um, because he obviously had played with him at Sussex and he was well aware that uh, Joffre can ramp them up. And, um, and then Joffre obviously said Ty Mill. And then, yeah, game finished. Unfortunately, we lost and we didn't have a great game. Um, I didn't bowl too well. Ty Mill didn't bowl too well. Uh, Joffre bowled well. Um, and we come back into the rooms and, and, you know, Gary Kirsten kind of come up to me and said, you end up bowling the quickest today. And I said, really? Um, I was a bit, a bit shocked. Um, but I, I knew that, them to always bowl over 145 k's in T20 cricket, so I, I knew that I'd be I would have bowled at least 145 k's, which I was really excited about. Um, and he said, "Yeah, 150.7 or 151 or whatever it was." So, pretty cool achievement, obviously on debut. Um, something that you know will hold with me forever. But you know, disappointing on the result and disappointing I haven't you know had a chance to play since then. Yeah, 150 clicks. That's- 93, 94 miles per hour. So that's, uh, that's, uh, that's pretty sharp. So, yeah, so you mentioned you hadn't had a chance to play against. Where do you see your game at the moment? Obviously, you're with Tasmania um, and then now with, uh, with Dan in Adelaide. Just Can you just talk a little bit about where your game is at the moment and your ambitions going forward in the game? Yeah, well, at the moment, um, I've kind of been pigeonholed as being a white ball cricketer, um, which isn't the case. I do want to play four-day cricket. I do like playing red ball cricket. Um, I like the, you know, how competitive all three formats of the game are and how different they are and, and the skill sets that you need for all three formats. Um, so I'm definitely trying to play all three formats at the moment. Um, in terms of where my game's at, it's it's been a bit tough because, you know, I played Big Bash. Um, I got picked up in the PSL on the back of that and then got picked up in the you know Canadian league on the back of the PSL as well, um, so I, I got a few gigs in a row, um, and then you know the Euro T20 I, I got selected in the squad there, um, but that didn't go ahead. I got picked in the Nepalese league, didn't go ahead. Um, got picked in the T10 league, um, had to pull out. So it's been a bit unfortunate and a bit unlucky that pretty much any league I've been signed to hasn't gone ahead or I haven't been picked to play. And then the ones that have gone ahead, I just haven't been picked up in. So it's a bit of a, a catch-22. Um, there's a lot of, you know, um, T20 franchises around the world that are, you know, pretty interested in, in having me in their setup and in their squad. You know, they like my skill set. They like that I bowl, you know, faster than anyone. Um, but the problem always keeps coming back as we haven't seen you play enough cricket and we don't know enough about you. Um, so it's pretty hard to, you know, take a risk and take a gamble and, and you know, pick you in the squad because, you know, sometimes you only get to pick, you know, six overseas players in the draft. And, you know, if, you, if you're picking me with one of them spots, you want to know that I'm going to be able to perform and, and do the job for you, which obviously I'm, I'm confident I can do. Um, but some of the scouts around the world haven't seen enough of it. So, um, you know, as I said, it was a bit of a bit tough at the moment, but, Hopefully, I get an opportunity somewhere and, and, and run with it, and then everything rolls off from there. So, who are your um, kind of mentors and coaches growing up? Um, who's kind of guided you through your career? Yeah, well, early on, as I said, I got identified as being quick at about you know 15 years of age, um, and I had a, a bowling coach here in Western Australia named Peter Clough, um, who did a lot of work with me uh, with my action and changed a lot um, really early on. Um, so he's probably the one that I'd credit really early on to, to where I am now. And then since then, you know, I've done some work with, with Ian Pont and uh, Stephen Jones and um, pretty much bounced off them for probably, you know, two, three years. Um, you know, sending them videos, obviously, because they're in England, I haven't got to really work with them, but sending off videos and um, getting feedback back of, of how I bowl fast and 
kind of explaining to me why I bowl fast and the reasons to, that I do it. Um, so then I can identify it myself. I can watch back videos. And um, if I'm in a, in a, you know, if I'm struggling, like, you know, day one of a four day game, I can check my videos and day two, I can come back and, and hopefully fix something. Or if, you know, there's a span of a few games where I feel like I'm not bowling quick, you know, I can look back on it and I can identify and, and you know, work it out myself. Um, so I haven't changed much with my technique the last few years. Um, it's all been, you know, all the bowling coaches that, you know, I get kind of given to me as such in the academies and the system, it's mostly, you know, um, game plans, you know, strategies um, and all that kind of game sense stuff. But in terms of technical stuff, yeah, it's been, you know, Ian Pont um, and Stephen Jones, really. Yeah, Ian Pont, a uh, friend of the show, did a piece of them. We'll put up the, the link in the card above. Um, yeah, so if he says you can bowl quick, you certainly can. So, uh, so yeah, so let's really looking forward to kind of getting into your tips, uh, which people can kind of take away. So, so yeah, um, let's get into it now. Guys, okay, so, you know, firstly, you know, grip, grip on a cricket ball. Uh, mine's pretty stock standard. I hold it pretty much straight down the middle separate like that and if I want to you know swing it sometimes because of my action because I come from you know pretty side on I don't come from completely front on um, I kind of have to hold it slightly you know towards like a first or second slip I just have to play around with that a little bit because um, as I said I come from a bit more of an angle so if I was to bowl you know straight out like this it's just going to come out wobbled and, and hit the wrong side um, so that's different from, from what I am um, to a lot of people. Um, and that's, as I said, because of my actions, I've had to kind of play around with that. And I still haven't got that perfect. I, I have days where I do swing the ball um, traditionally at the start. And I've got some days where, where I don't. And then uh, my key weapon is to reverse swing the ball um, in the back end of one day games and T20 games. And also, obviously, in four day games, I can reverse swing the ball. And I just hold it normally. Um, like I usually would. I just get, if I bought full enough, I'll get a late, late reverse swing. So, um, I'm talking now about the, the brace front leg. Um, so a lot of people might not know what it is. Um, but, you know, when you land with your front leg, um, if you have it braced, which obviously is, is not bent, it, it's, it's braced, um, you can kind of flick over top of it. Um, and get a bit of a whip through it. So um, I, I, with my front leg, I, it's one of the things that when I, when I get it right and, you know, I get plenty of traction into the, into the ground and I'm not slipping and I, and I brace it, I feel like I get a lot more whip um, over the top of it. Shoulder hip separation is um, obviously when you just have pretty much yeah, how, how much you can separate I bowl front on. So when I bowl, um, how much I can separate you know, my shoulders and my hips and really come back and really use all of my, all of my arms and all of my range. Um, so then when I bowl, I'm using a, a bigger range of movement um, and kind of making my levers a lot longer um, so I can you know, bowl, bowl faster. My front arm position. Um, is really, because I'm front on, I land, you know, front foot is front on, my back foot's front on, everything's front on and going straight through to the batsman. Um, so my front arm's the same. I get, like to get it really high and smash straight down, um, kind of into the bottom of my ribs. So my front arm is, you know, pretty important. Um, a lot of people, I guess, will go out with it or kind of come to the side or whatever. Um, but yeah, if I get mine straight up and straight down, um, and, uh, and I can really feel it, I bowl a lot quicker. So a lot of the times I might be a little bit lazy with it and, you know, not really feel it ripped down. I won't bowl as quick. Um, so that's kind of a key indicator that I have to really feel it and really grunt and really use it. Um, and sometimes I try to bowl too quick and it might come out to the side and that just makes everything sling a bit more. Um, so I have to make sure it's really in there and I can get the ball going through. Arm speed is something that um, I developed, I feel, from baseball. Um, I've always had a really strong shoulder and I've always been able to, you know, 
really use my shoulder and, and, and use my arm speed. Um, I feel like with my action and, you know, how I set up with, you know, my front arm and how I land and my hip and shoulder separation, I can really, you know, use a whole range of movement. And when I use my whole range of movement and also, you know, really use my shoulder and move as quick as I can, um, I'll bowl at my quickest. And there's certain parts of the year where, you know, my shoulder is not moving as quick as I want it to do. So I might start, you know, kind of baseball pitching and, and throwing a lot of balls during the week just to kind of switch it on because it's something that, you know, if you're not bowling quick for a couple of months, like you're just kind of being lazy and, and not training, you know, as quick as you can, you, you can lose it. You can, you know, lose lose 10% of your arm speed or whatever it is. Um, and a few things I have done in the past, uh, mostly when I play T20 cricket, is I have used um, weight, weighted cricket balls. Um, some people are against them, um, but I feel like they're good if you use them in the right program. So a run-up run up is, you know, quite an important thing. I know my personal run-up um, isn't very fast. It's, it's 20 metres exactly. Um, one thing I'd recommend straight, straight away is make sure you mark your run-up with a tape measure so it's perfect every time and, you know, it's really consistent, both at training and games. Because if you're stepping it out or, or whatever you're doing, you might be, you know, a little bit shorter or a little bit long. So make sure your run-up's really consistent. In terms of mine... Uh, my run-up's not perfect um, by any means, you know. Um, I stride a bit too long, um, but it, it works for me. I don't really have too much momentum coming to the crease, um, but that's the type of bowler I am, you know. I, I'm, I, use my front, I use my front arm, I use my um, shoulder separation, I use my brace front leg, you know. The things that I use, all my work's pretty much done at the crease. Um, I could probably bowl a little bit quicker if I ran up a bit quicker, most people do, um, but if I do that, I feel like my action might be a bit rushed and I can't really feel everything I'm doing. Um, so for the moment, uh, my run-up's been pretty slow, I guess. Obviously, as a fast bowler, it's, it's really important. You know, you're pretty, you're pretty much useless if you can't stay on the park. Um, it's all good if you can bowl fast or if you take a lot of wickets, but, you know, if you can't play every week or if you're, you know, missing three or four months at a time every year, um, well, then, it's, you know, it's not great for anyone. So in terms of injury prevention, um, in season, we probably work out, you know, two times a week um, and really building, you know, a strong core and strong legs, so a strong base um, is really important. And then in terms of games, you know, warming up, um, I use, you know, bands um, to warm up my hamstrings because I've, I've torn hamstrings before. Um, I use bands and, and levers and all that to, you know, warm up all my abdominals and my shoulders just to make sure I'm ready to go. Um, and I like to, to sprint, I guess, so pretty much get my max speed before I, before I bowl because I feel like it, you know, warms up the hamstrings and, and all the muscles. So, you know, I'm ready to be explosive and I'm ready to bowl fast. Um, I mean, in terms of actually bowling, uh, I like to start off, you know, one or two steps and, and build up to my full full run up for a game and before a training session. So um, I'll probably take the longest to warm up <laughs> than most of the other guys um, at training because, as I said, I bowl off one or two steps. I gradually come into a jump and then four or five steps and then I start kind of jogging in before I really, you know, get back and, and put it all together. And, and that's both a mixture of, of warming up and also... Um, when I bowl off, off the short run, um, off like one or two steps, I feel like I won't bowl fast if I don't get everything right. So, you know, I might bowl one off one or two balls off one or two st steps and it won't be coming out as fast as I want it to. So then I kind of have to identify, you know, am I not bracing my front leg? Um, am I not using my front arm? You know, what am I not doing? Um, am I not rotating hard enough? And then... Once I'm, you know, happy with how fast the ball's coming out off one or two steps, then I'm ha then I can, you know, take it back 